Hi, and welcome to part four in our HEC HMS for HECRAS user series. This is the last part, and in this one, we will step through a basic model setup in HMS to compare to our rain on grid results in HECRAS. Now, as a warning, uh, this will be a bit of a whirlwind. I won't hit each of the options, just the bare minimum to generate some flows, and then I'll point you to some resources at the end for more training. Now, if I click on individual basins here and hold control down in HMS, I do have some options here I wanted to mention under GIS for merging these elements or if I click on an individual reach, you have the option of splitting these elements. So any way you want to divide this is fine. You might want to put in some additional breakpoints where you have gauges and things like that. You can also go through each of these um, features and see their parameters at the bottom. Now we've got the model set up, but under components here, I'm going to set up a meteorological model. So we have the basin model, now I'm making a new rainfall model. So this is gold, I'll just call it gold like everything else, and we'll make this one match what we did in HECRAS. So I'll take this one here and under meteorological models, when I click on it, you can see here um, that it's got some defaults set in there. So I'm going to change specified uh, hiatus graph to a frequency storm. Again, that'll match what we've done before, but uh, until I tell all the basins to use that on the, uh, the basins tab, um, you won't actually see uh, where you can enter those. So on including sub-basins, I'll say yes, include the sub-basins. So now when I go in and click on, an in, on the frequency storm up here in the menu, I can go ahead and enter that in. Now we've got some of these values. Um, I've got these from the Bureau of Meteorology. Uh, this is an Australian site and this comes from uh, the gauges that we've got. I'll go ahead and just plug some of these in here all the way up to 24 hours since that's what we used in HECRAS. So my 24 hour rainfall depth, 324 millimeters and we'll add that um, to this frequency storm. So with that, um, I'm going to save this one here, and then um, that, that's, that's going to be the model that applies to each of these um, sub-basins. So when you look at each one of them, you can click on the frequency storm. You can't enter the data there because I've told it to use the data that I have under the frequency storm. So that's my meteorological model. Now for each of the basins here, I'm going to go ahead and you know do a control specification. I'll call this one gold as well. And we're going to set up the event that we're going to run here. So uh, this is uh, a, a control specification, just tells the model um, what the parameters are, what the timing is, when it starts and stops. And again, this will just match the dates and times that I put into the HECRAS model. So we'll do a 24-hour event going from the 1st of January to the 2nd of January in uh, 2050. Uh, I can change this down to five minutes um, since if, if I wanted to put something that small into my frequency storm, um, I think I've got a 15 minute as my uh, minimum there. So um, it's not going to have much of an effect of the basin this size. So one of the things I'm going to do here is change the method to uh, Muskingum Kunj for everything. So as I hit that and uh, change it, that just applies it to all of the basins together. Now there is a lot of documentation on all the other options that you could use, but that's the one I'm using for this particular example. So when I click on an individual sub-basin, you can see here that I can enter in different losses for each one. Um, I've got these, uh, these are close to the ones off of the ARNR data hub um, where we've got some information for each of these. I'm going to go ahead and click on each of the basins and put the same uh, initial loss and continuing loss uh, into, into the model for these. Because um, this is what I used when I applied the rainfall excess in HECRAS to my frequency storm. I actually subtracted these off uh, before I ever applied the rainfall excess. So with that now, um, I can click on each one of these and um, let's see, I've got all those losses in. Now we'll do the transform. And again, lots of literature on these just to get things going here. I'm going to make them all the same for a time of concentration, uh, you know, for something this size. I'll, I'll choose two hours for the time of concentration. I'll choose a four hour storage co coefficient. And I'm just going to leave those the same. I can customize this and we can work out equations and things for each of the sub basins where you might have one that responds more slowly than another. But I'm just going to go into each one of these and put a time of concentration of two and a storage coefficient of four for each of the sub basins that you see here. So I've got um, one sink at the end. Um, all these things are routed correctly. You can change and add things um, with where each of these reaches uh, drains to. Those are all just going to stay as the default, though, um, because it's all set up um, based on how it was delineated. 
I'm going to give it an initial discharge for each of these on the base flow and again just go back through each of these basins and put these in. Um, again, I'll give you more links uh, on you know how to how to vary these and um, you know we've got full courses in how to um, adjust the parameters. This is just to get some rainfall in the model so that HECRAS users can see what uh, HMS can do. So I think with that, that should give us all the parameters we need to put in for the uh, basins. Uh, now we need to look at, um, let's see what, so I think on the junctions, those are all set up correctly um, based on what, uh, what the model did, but here on the reaches. So the reaches doesn't auto-populate. Uh, I can go in uh, to those shape files and find the length of the reaches. Keep in mind this is in meters, and I think this one's about two kilometers long, and the slope, I'll, I'll put one in here. Again, this is meters per meter, so 0 0.003 is 0.3 percent. I'll put in a Manning's value um, for that channel. I'll put in an index flow here as well, that's somewhere between the initial and the peak flow. And now I'll go back to my RAS mapper and just cut a section here. This is how I measured uh, my reaches. Um, this is a cross section across it. You know, uh, let's we'll call this one uh, 20 meters, maybe a, a two to one side slope. You can vary this again for each each reach. Um, you can get a little more complex than that. And like I said in the earlier um, video, um, you can do full uh, 2D uh, routing and 2D modeling. Um, hydraulic modeling in, in HMS now. So I'll put those bottom widths in, um, make it 20 uh, for the bottom width, two to one for the side, uh, the side slope, and I, I guess I could vary that. The, the lower reach, um, this one's a shorter one, that lower one is a little longer. I think um, I measured that one at about five kilometers. Uh, you know, yeah, maybe six, six kilometers. It's all, again, it's in meters, watch out. So uh, 6,000 meters, 0.2% um, slope. Um, which I measured off of uh, in RAS Mapper as well. And I'll give this one a little uh, milder slopes and a bigger bottom width um, to make it a larger channel. So these are my channel parameters. Uh, again, there are a few others uh, that we could be listing here, but now I'm gonna go ahead and make a simulation run. And um, I'll call this one gold as well, just to match everything else we've been doing. Go to the next and um, when we run this, actually, this is going to be helpful if we can see the messages down at the bottom. Uh, I maximized the screen here before so that we can uh, see as much of the terrain as possible and zoom in as far as we can. Uh, but now when we hit multiple compute, if I had multiple runs set up, I could run them all. Um, and you can see the messages here. I'll just compute a single one there. And what this has done now is at the sink, I can go and um, get my results. And you can see now I've got my hydrograph. And it's actually very close to the peak flow. Um, this is you know, um, not always the case the first time you run it. Um, this is actually very close to what the regional flood frequency gives you as well. If you click on an individual basin, though, this is the upper basin here. Let me get myself out of the way so you can see where we're at. Um, this is this upper basin, and you can see the hiatograph and the lag time. So um, that's actually at a 15 minute interval because uh, I didn't put the five minute in. Um, and you can see w the rainfall excess that was applied here. So individual elements, um, you can get summary tables for those. You can also generate um, a, a report uh, at the end. This is the summary um, of the volume, so you can see how much of the rainfall turned into runoff. Um, and yeah, it, just get, give it a feel and click on each of these and see what's available. Under tools, you can make a standard report. If I click on all of these things and generate a report there, I have to pick a folder for it to, to drop it into. Um, it will make an HTML format file um, on your hard drive. And then if you go browse to that one and open it up, because I've selected everything, you'll have absolutely everything uh, that, it can pr uh, that it can generate for you. So as I scroll down here, you'll see the tables of um, drainage areas and peak discharges and the rainfall hydrographs and the cumulative volume and all that, but you can compare it to some of the results that you might have done in HECRAS um, through the rain on grid method. So with that, um, again, you can see here what, uh, you know, how, how simple it can be. Um, you can also obviously get very complex with that. Let me go back into RAS Mapper though and do a comparison, um, like I said we would do. So this is right across the outlet channel here if I turn on um, the, uh, the contours. Um, one thing I wanted to do before we compare the results actually is um, show you what we could do in HECRAS if we wanted to add some basins or customize it. Sometimes HMS won't give you exactly what you need to do in HECRAS. 
So for this uh, piece of it, I just wanted to show you how you might generate some uh, shape files that share a border if you were going to delineate this manually. So we let Heck HMS do this automatically. But I'm going to go ahead here and make a new shape file um, or a new feature within the existing shape file that I'm editing. Um, and as I delineate manually along this ridge, sometimes you double click by accident. And then if you don't want to go in and move the vertices and add new vertices all over to finish what you're doing, uh, I'll just give you a quick tip here on what you can do uh, as a GIS tool. If I move this thing around and make this shape uh, overlapping that border, I can then use geospatial operations by right clicking on it and uh, join them up um, with a common border. So that just discards the piece that got cut out. And now I can keep going as I delineate this. And as long as I overlap with the basin that, uh, that I've already drawn, um, I can then go in and do the same thing. So I'll just um, shorten this up here. I won't go down to the uh, river outlet. But if we go all the way around again and cover everything up, if I discard everything uh, that's covered by another feature, I can just clip those together. And then if I click on one and the other and hold control down, I can merge them together. Now I have this basin here. Uh, it's got uh, one odd point there. Sometimes the vertices end up, uh, a couple of odd ones get thrown in. I deleted that one. And now I've got one shape here that has a common border with one that was already there. So I commonly do this when we're doing watershed maps. I'll save this one. Um, you can also do this with uh, stream lengths as well, um, with segments. Say I was uh, delineating here you know, manually instead of getting it out of HMS. If I was manually delineating a stream, if I had that in there and I wanted to put in a junction and I wanted to um, uh, you know, figure out where that was going to be, I'll just uh, right click near it and um, near the point where I want to split it and then just say split selected lines. Now I've got two of them. So these GIS tools, I know a lot of you are probably already familiar with these, uh, with these uh, commands, but if you're not, um, they can be uh, very handy. Now splitting, splitting a line is easy, but splitting a polygon is a little different. Let's see if we can split this one up along the, uh, this watershed divide here. If I wanted to split this one, there maybe somebody's got easier ways of doing this. Um, I know it's uh, in GIS packages, there are different ways. I could just come back as a straight line across this whole thing. But if I just make this little wedge here um, of where I'd like to split it, I'm going to use that left edge of this, um, uh, of this shape that I've drawn as the, uh, the new split line. And the way I'll do that is by right clicking on it to go into ge geospatial operations. And uh, in this case, I'll preserve um, what I wanted to, uh, uh, any, any of the overlap. And then I'll just take those two shapes, um, the little wedge that I've drawn and the one that's already there, and I'll just merge them together. I might have to do a little bit of cleanup there on the bottom. I didn't, wasn't paying much attention to how I was uh, adding that up, but clean it up a little bit. And now I've got two different basins. So that's uh, just you know a handy tool that you can use. Um, let me just uh, try the same thing here with the uh, lines. Again, you can merge them back together. So I split them apart. Now we've merged them back together. Um, so that's a little uh, sidetrack um, for doing things manually within Heck Raz, um, within Raz Mapper, and using that as a GIS tool. So there you see those basins. Let me just zoom back out and show you the whole uh, the whole watershed here. Um, with that new little piece that we've added. Now, if I take that uh, those hydrographs that uh, we generated before and um, and compare them, it it almost looks uh, it almost looks like they're <laughs> they're identical um, or you know really close. Uh, I had this one that was I think 400 cubic meters uh, per second as the max, and then um, I had this one out of Heck HMS that was really similar and matches the RFFE and all that. And if you look, oh, look, it peaks around 3 o'clock. And this one, oh, it peaks around, uh, you know, 15, uh, 1,600 hours. That's actually not very close. This is 12 hours later. That's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So with that, um, you got you got to watch out for that. Um, I did want to also um, touch on some of the uh, other resources that are available to you. If you wanted to turn these into a... Um, uh, a watershed map that's you know got some cool features like you see here. Um, this is one that we've got a class on how to do this, take some of these shape files and turn it into a map that looks like this with the insets and the straw orders and things like that, um, fading everything out. So 
I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, this is, again, the last course in the series um, of, uh, or the last um, video in this four-part series. But if you want to see any more detail, uh, just let us know in the feedback. Um, subscribe if you want to see some more. And I look forward to uh, some uh, you know, uh, additional uh, interaction with uh, everybody out there, all the HEC Razzlers and now the HEC HMS users as well. Um, I hope you're able to uh, jump back and forth across that boundary and use both programs. Um, again, watch out for these. I guess my final point is um, you know, the, the way those lag times were off um, so, so far you may want to pull in some really high uh, roughness values for your um, shallow depths uh, to really simulate what's going on and to really slow the water down to get it to be closer to the gauge record because typically uh, HMS will give you something that matches gauge records uh, a little more closely in terms of the timing uh, than a HECRAS rain on grid model would tends to react a little too quickly sometimes. So with that word of warning, I'll sign off for today. Uh, we'll see you around.